Hey, good morning guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today, I've got another review today. And it's a review on something I've been promising for quite some time. And what it is, is right here. Some of you just might know what this is. This is my hammock. I used to use this in a lot of bushwalking, but not only bushwalking, I used to use this a lot for car bus camping as well. So anywhere you can go camping, as long as there's uh, trees, reasonably strong trees, uh, around about three and a half metres or thereabouts apart, you can hook up these hammocks. Now some of you might think, how can this be com comfortable? But you'd be surprised how comfortable this is because it's not like a conventional hammock that you see here in Australia. This one is custom made from a mob in America called War Bonnet. So they call it, and it's called a War Bonnet Blackbird Hammock. They are reasonably popular in Australia, for those in the know who knows about the hammocks. Another brand that's popular is the Hennessy Hammocks. And in fact, uh, some of the retail camping stores around Australia do actually stock and sell the Hennessy hammocks. Now I've owned this hammock for a long time, probably seven or eight years now, and I've heard that here in Australia there are quite a number of hammock manufacturers that are starting to make similar hammocks to these. So if you're interested in something like this, it won't hurt to go to have a look around and see what's available. So without further ado, let's set this up and show you what it looks like. So the first thing we need to do before we put up our hammock, we need to consider the safety of the trees. Okay, so the hammock I'll show you comes with this, like it's, I think it's like a Dacron or something, I can't remember what it's called now, but it's a very thin rope and it's really strong and it's non-stretchable. So we use these straps. So these straps go around the tree and the thickness of that strap is enough to take care of the tree so it doesn't cause ring bark. So it's very important that you do use some thicker straps like this to protect the trees from ring bark. So again, what you do is you put one in your pocket Now I have been down here a number of times and camped over here with me hammocks but it's been quite a number of years since I've done that so I can't, I can't recall alright I can't recall how exactly I've done this here we go, I think we've got it now That's better. And these are these carabine eclipse that you see here that I've used. And they will now hook in on the end here. So they've got a loop on the end here. Okay, now we'll go set up on this tree here. Now how, how you determine the height you set these is uh, depending on your hammock that you use. Okay, the certain hammocks that requires, that requires a certain angle on the rope that goes from this way. So now, so now we've got those two anchor points set. So I'm gonna go now grab the hammock and join that to get in and show you how that's set up. Okay, now the beauty with this hammock, you'll see on either side, so you can set these up without them ever touching the ground. You'll see inside here there's a knot, there's sleeves. Luke, Luke, you know how to set these up. If you look real close here, see how the this rope is inside the other. So with that, I can adjust the length. Now if I loosen that up, bunch that up together, I can pull that through and adjust the length. But as soon as you get a bit of weight on that, that constricts it 
and that holds your weight. So believe, believe me guys, I tell you, that is more than sufficient to hold my weight. These are really, really strong ropes. See, you can't use just any rope with these. You have to make sure you use, you use the correct rope. Now, of course, you can use a rope that's a lot thick, thicker than this. But in my case, being an ultra lightweight backpacker that I used to be, you had to carry as light as gear as possible that's safe and com comfortable. Hence, we use the lightest rope, the lightest weight gear that we can find to do the job. Now you can see how that didn't touch the ground at all. Now that's, that is a little bit too loose. There it is, okay, so I'm just working out. So it's a certain direction. Now I'm, I'm holding on to the sleeve and I'm pulling up as I'm pulling this. That looks pretty good. Now let's go this side. And that looks pretty good. Now with the wall bonnet hammocks, the idea with these is you want these at a certain degree angle. I can't remember exactly what it is, but I know if I use my forefinger and do like a pistol grip, like so, and hold it so, and hold that like that, you want that finger straight. So that's an ideal angle at the moment. So that's it, that hammock is set up. I've got a couple of pegs that I'm gonna go grab and with those pegs, I can set these out and a one on the other side and that actually stretches the hammock out. And you can see it's got a midgy proof fly screen over the top as well. So I'll go grab them and I'll reposition the camera and I'll show you how I do that. I've got a couple of pegs now. Now general, generally we don't use pegs this size Generally we take ultra lightweight pegs, so it doesn't take much of pegs really to hold this together as you'll see, but so I'll, I'll peg these out now. So this, this side here is what we call a shelf. So what, what I'm pegging out here now, uh, the, these are elastic cord, which is adjustable. And then we've got another one on this side here. Now, as you can see, these are relatively easy to set up. Now, I haven't set up this hammock in quite a number of years now. It's probably three, four, a few years since I've had set this up. So I've got no, no practice here. I'm just going straight into it. So that's it. Now we'll pull these out taut. Now that's perfect. I don't know if you can see that. Another thing with these hammocks, this one here is known as a double layered hammock. You can see it's got the two layers here. And the idea with that is you can grab a thin air mattress or blankets or anything, some insulation form and slide it in there. Because the thing with cold climate, Buck, you'd know this. You learnt this when you went up to down to Camp Cobark in 2018 for the, the drifter event and you slept on the ground on a camp stretcher without an insulation on the bottom how cold it is. Well these have got a double layer in them so you can use the insulation in between that so you lay on top of the insulation and it's not so much as being compressed. But the best thing to use for these is what we call an underquilt. 
So basically, hence the name, quilt under. So basically, it's a quilt that hangs underneath the hammock. And then you lay on top of the hammock, but because the quilt actually forms to your body shape and hangs underneath the hammock, you're not compressing it down. And what happens then if you're not compressing it down, it keeps that nice insulation because otherwise what happens with the sleeping bag, when you lay on top of it, it compresses all that filling down and you'll lose a lot of that insulation. So in order for that insulation to work, it needs to be that bulky so it traps your air in. So it doesn't matter if you could be even still using the best quality down goose down feathered down sleeping bag. As soon as that's compressed, you're taking away all its insulation. So that's what I use because I predominantly used to do all my hiking and bushwalking in cold climates. For example, in around Blue Mountains in wintertime. So I use a what's called a goose down under quilt. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go grab that and I'll show you that. Here it is guys. That's it. That inside there is an under quilt. That's enough to keep me warm in the coldest of climate to the verge of snow, well, even snowing, laying on that hammock. Now that's the beauty. You might wonder how in the world can you fit a sleeping bag quilt such thing in such a small compact size that'll keep you warm in that there. Well, the secret is the goose down. Remember I mentioned goose down before? Goose down, for its weight and size, is extremely warm compared to anything else. Now, the only thing you've got to make sure with goose down is you have to make sure you never get this wet. Because as soon as goose down gets wet, Number one, it takes a very long time to dry. And number two, you will freeze. So it's the utmost of importance that this is dry, always. But well, let's pull this out. Now this is extremely lightweight. There's hardly any weight in this. As I mentioned before, I was doing a lot of ultra lightweight backpacking <laughs> Keith's got the drone up. He's keep picking up some awesome footage. Now this here has got basically it's a quilt. That's the size of it. It's got elastic. That's an elastic. The sleeve thrown in on the end and elastic on the other side as well. It's cut in such a way that it contours perfectly to the bottom of that hammock. So when you go, you can't just go uptown and buy any sleeping bag or down quilt, under quilt, and just whack it under any hammock. It has to be specifically made to fit that hammock. So what we do here, under this eyelet where it's, if you see here, where it's got that knob where the end of the nylon hammock is gathered. We just hook that on there. And then we just contour this underneath here and hook that up here as well. So that's basically it. <laughs> 